Fantastic. Hello, hello. Can you hear me now? You guys uh, know we're doing a few giveaways, right? And I want to be able to hear who the winner is. Great, great idea. Great idea. Does anybody want to know if you won? Got a few people up front that want to know. Anybody in the back? Want to mosey on down the side? Yeah, we'll just keep calling names. Right. Until one of the four of us is here for the next one. and everything. Uh, this is all courtesy of our sponsor, Go Fish Digital. Yay! So thank them very much. Give them a little Woo! round of applause. <laughs> Go Fish is our featured sponsor for this month, and we decided to try something a little bit different with them, having them host us at their offices here, so we can uh, see where it is that they work and where they do their Search optimization. Hey, that seems like it changed a little bit. Can you hear me better now? <coughs> All right, since I'm the person that you least want to hear this evening, if you're in the back and you can't hear me, now's the time to let me know. Can't hear me very well. Can we do anything with the sound to make that happen for the speakers so that way the important people can be heard? No, nope, just move up. There's a row of seats up here two, in the back. Three, four, five, Come six. this way. I got like 20 seats towards the front. Come on down. All right, while everybody's moving. Another thing uh, to seat the conversation for this evening. We like to do a little jobs matchmaking kind of scenario here. So uh, if you either represent a company or work for a company that is currently hiring, throw your hand up. Oh, anybody else? One, two, three, four. All right, everybody, peek around the room, look and see whose hands are up. All right, now the next stage of this, who is looking for work? Throw your hand up. All right, so the job seekers know who the job people are, and they can match up at the end of the evening and see if we can make jobs happen tonight. All right, uh, another thing that we have coming up, Internet Summit. Who has heard of it? Talking about mid-November. A few people have heard about it. Anybody been to the Internet Summit in one of the previous years? Got a few folks there as well. We are giving away a couple of tickets to the Internet Summit. If you would like to attend this conference and you don't have your ticket yet, use the discount code RAWSEO and get another 50 bucks off of the current price. The price goes up as you get closer to the event. Um, at, also, be sure to go to raleighseomeetup.org slash giveaways, and you will find that we are running a giveaway. You can enter there, and we will have two winners for those tickets. So uh, grab your ticket and enter to win. Let's see. What was that coupon code? The discount code is RAWSEO, and it is also on the uh, information page for the giveaway. Thank you. Um, so let's see, I've touched on the Internet Summit Conference. Here's another important one coming up. It's a few months away, and ticket sales are not open on this yet, but just so you know, the venue is booked, and we will be having uh, Jenny, I, I butcher her last name all the time. Hel Alice. Eliza? Alice. Alice? Okay. Jenny. Everybody knows where it's Jenny here. We're all friends. <laughs> uh, Jenny Hallis will be our keynote speaker for this year, and that is coming up in May. And uh, in order to make things a little bit easier to find it, if you go to raleighseoconference.com, you will be redirected to the right part of the site to find out what's going on with the conference. And that is starting to come together now. Um, like I say, ticket sales will come up later and uh, we'll have more speakers. But the uh, speaker application is already up there. If you're interested in speaking at the conference, Go to raleighseoconference.com and fill out the speaker application there. And last but not least, 
If you are watching the live stream, which uh, this evening we're going live to YouTube, you can tweet at SEO Meetup, and uh, we will try to get your questions answered. We already have a long list of them, but we're going to uh, run those into the list as well. Or if you're just shy and you're in the audience here, and you would like to ask a question without raising your hand, you can tweet it at SEO Meetup. And without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Brian. Thank you very much for organizing everything else from here out. All right. Thanks, Frank. Um, so yeah, I'm Brian with GoFish Digital, or digital marketing company. Uh, no sales pitch, um, but we, you know, we're, we're considered, maybe we feel like the new kids on the block, um, but when we look back, we've been here about a year, uh, and I've grown a ton. Um, and we just really, really love uh, the digital marketing scene in this area. Um, I was based in DC up until like six weeks ago, and if we had a meetup, we were thrilled to get 10 or 15 people uh, to talk SEO. Um, so it's cool to you know, be able to throw a meetup here together and, and get a bunch of people who want to geek out on SEO. So really appreciate that and so happy to be a part of this scene. Um, we got some awesome speakers, super pumped for, uh, for who's here tonight. Um, and then we also have a couple cool giveaways from, from companies in the, in the SEO space. Uh, a couple quick thanks to, uh, to Frank, JR, Patrick, and, um, and our own Jennifer Wright for pulling everything together. Jennifer on our team and Rebecca uh, did an amazing job doing everything in the back, um, which has been awesome. Um, so thank you for that. And then of course, uh, we're based here on the second floor of The Nest, um, who has this awesome space um, that they let us use for events like this. So we appreciate that as well. Um, so first up, I think we wanted to give away um, a full year pro account to Authority Labs. I don't know if anyone here has it. If you do have it and you win, give it to a friend because they're not doing it for existing customers. Um, but Authority Labs is just an old school baller rank tracking tool. Um, you're not going to get one that's more robust or who has a longer legacy and it's been, it's been in the game for, for a long time. Um, so, so let's do that. If you have your ticket here ready. Leslie, number five seven two zero two nine. Did you say nine or eight? Two zero two nine. Oh, you're so close. Two zero two nine. Two zero two nine. Going once, going twice. Two zero two nine. Gone. Oh, it's just about the best. Five, yeah, seven, two, zero, zero, seven. Oh, oh, that's me. Oh, oh. that's you. <laughs> 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 Mixes in. All right. Uh, if we were going to rip that, we definitely wouldn't have done it that way. <laughs> Here you go. Thanks. Oh, it's in there. Congrats. Good job. So I met our next speaker like three months ago, um, and I just found him to be hilarious and knowledgeable um, and everything you want out of an SEO. You know, he cares about rankings, but he cares about the user experience as well. Um, so it's interesting when I was asking about his background and he told me he started uh, in 2011 as a black hat link builder, um, and I asked him if he still is, and he said no. Um, so, but it, you know, he's, he's been in the game for a while. Um, he was a consultant. Um, did everything from mom and pops to consulting for consulting firms who consult, um, and everything in between. Um, when I was sort of asking him what he wanted to talk about, he said, you know, he works with everyone within Red Hat, um, the product teams, content IT, UX, um, and for a year and a half or two years, he spent time just convincing them that SEO wasn't wizard magic. Um, and so I think he's going to get a little bit into that tonight. Um, he's talking about some of the, the things that sometimes we get caught up in rankings and forget about, which is that you know at the end of the day, we're trying to get people on the site to take a specific action, not just rank in the search results. So without further ado, uh, Jarris Mitchell, director of Red Hat. Uh, that's great. I assume this is my clicker? Sure. All right. Ugh. That's not the title I was going for. Uh, I am here to talk to you about talking, or about telling people what things are and what they can, like what they can do with them. 
because that's an important thing that we always forget about. And like, they wanted me to come in and talk about advanced strategies. Uh, anybody know who Will Reynolds is? Okay, Will Reynolds, very clever search guy. He has a book, or he has a, a blog post. It's like business 1.0, and he talks about a thing called the plot factor. And the plot factor is when you, is this microphone cutting out? Get closer. Get, get closer? Yeah. Just like real, real sensual with it? All the way down. Okay. <laughs> so, so Will Reynolds has a blog where he talks about what he calls the plot factor, which is artificially kind of inflating a report or an analysis just to have something heavy that you can like throw down on a table. It makes like a nice plop, I guess. Uh, and I think that's awful. So real quick, before we get started, raise your hand if you are agency. Hey, agency folks. Raise your hand if you're in-house. I see you band of IBM hooligans in the back. <laughs> raise your hands if you're a freelancer. What's up? I used to live your life. It's terrible. Uh, and raise your hand if you're just trying to figure stuff out and learn something. What's up, don't get scared. I, um, everyone at one point or another was in your shoes just trying to figure out what's going on and kind of what makes sense. Uh, so back to my initial summary. Why should we tell people what things are? And that's kind of wrapped up in the very important question, which is why do people search? And they search to answer questions. If you don't agree with me, you might just kind of want to leave or something. Uh, people probably want to give you money. Like if you have a business that exists online, you have potential customers somewhere out there in the universe. They just might not know it, or they might not care, or they might not want the thing that you have. People research before they buy things. Everyone. How many people have bought something without doing at least price comparison? Jaren, you're a liar. <laughs> Stop it. You're embarrassing us all. So before I started, JR told me I'd better be funny, otherwise he was going to tweet mean things about me. So if you guys see him going to Twitter, just shame him. Uh, so when, when we think of price, or when we think of research that occurs before a purchase, the mental model that I have, and you're free to use this mental model or not, search and especially in the I'm just trying to figure out what things are realm, it's all about finding mental models that work for you and things that kind of make sense moving forward. And that's very helpful, and if it stops being helpful, you discard that mental model. Uh, the kind of three layers of questions that I think about for researching products is what is this thing, what does it do, and why should I care? It'll be important, we'll come back to that. So a lot of people have a hard time saying what the thing is, and I see this, I'm just gonna knock everything. Um, I see this a lot with restaurants that don't have their menus or their hours up in the world. Uh, I see it a lot with enterprise technology, because uh, we never tell anybody what anything is, and that kind of runs the full gamut. Um, so why? Why do, why do people not tell people what things are and what they do? One claim is, well, our menu changes a lot, so you know, it's a lot of work to update it, and we don't want someone to accidentally stumble across our old menu and then come in and nah, that'll be a problem. Uh, with consultants, I see a lot of, well, we do a lot, and we don't want to limit ourselves by not listing a thing or uh, saying that we don't do a thing, because we do everything, and we could do anything that our customer wants us to do. They just have to pay us for it, and we'll figure it out along the way. I understand, I used to do that too. Um, and my favorite is everyone knows what this thing is and what it does. I recently bought a new mattress off of one of those mattress websites, and that was the thing that I encountered more than anything else, was just, you know, it's a mattress. You know what a mattress is, just buy ours. Why? Why 
Ghost over Lisa, over Purple, over Casper. Why? It, and none of them could tell me. So I had to go to like secondary research sites and uh, user comparisons and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's terrible. It's obnoxious. So examining these points, it changes. We don't want it to be out of date. Okay, cool, just update it. Like, you know how to use a website? Just change the thing. Push your new menu and replace the old menu. It's okay, it's hard, it's scary, but it'll make things easier. And if, if you have a seasonal menu, do that. Like, change it when it changes. It's, it's, not, it's entirely not that difficult. The whole, we do a lot, cool, create more content, talk about the things you do, things you haven't done, but want to do, the things that you're capable of, and all that sort of stuff. It's okay, it's okay to build more content that explains what your life is, and what your company is, and what your existence is. That is way better than not having that stuff in place. Everyone knows what it is, they probably don't. They might not, I don't know. Like, if I say jeans, everybody knows what jeans are. If I say Heelys, maybe not everybody knows what, the, what those are. They might not be hip 90s kids, I don't know. So, okay, we're gonna get a little bit more specific. Nobody wants to buy your jeans if you don't tell them how much they cost. Nobody will buy your jeans if you don't tell them what size they're available in. Nobody will, tell, will buy your jeans if you don't tell them that they're jeans. If they're just, if you say, hip denim leg application, what does that even mean? Nobody knows. Don't make users guess with bad copywriting or bad content. So if you're building an e-commerce, tell them what it is, tell them how much it costs, tell them what size it is. Like, is anyone's mind blown? I'm really grateful to see nobody nodding, but that does not explain how much bad content exists on the internet. Um, for real and for serious, say the things. If you're building organic for a restaurant, give them your hours, give them your menu, talk about the things that are relevant for a user, like how to make reservations. And their address. And, and the address, yes, who said that? <laughs> yeah, you're my buddy. Um, if you're building for a technology, tell them what it does, tell them what it doesn't do, tell them how much it costs. It's not hard. Have you guys noticed the pattern? Are you guys bored with this pattern yet? No. Tell them what the thing is, and tell them what the thing does. Do you want, pe do you want people to know? <laughs> You want them to be able to find your thing? Tell them what it is and what it does. So specifically, if you don't know, <laughs> legitimately, talk to your salespeople or the person who answers the phone uh, because they are your first line of defense. They are the people who can tell you what questions they are tired of getting. Yeah. They are the people who can communicate to you the dumb crap that people off the streets I want to ask them, you know? Is anybody working with a restaurant? One, okay. If they have gluten-free options, put it on the website. Because I bet the people at the front desk are tired of getting the question about the gluten-free options. Talk to your customers, do surveys, things like that. If you have a CRM platform or something along those lines, you can send out emails, you can stay in contact, you can do surveys. Cool. Get actual feedback from real humans who might have a problem with the things that you're doing or might just have vagaries. You're gonna to have to sift through, through some garbage because that's how that works. Um, then of course there's traditional keyword research. There's getting on some forums. By the way, use FAQ Fox because it'll save you a lot of time after you've identified which forums to use. Uh, use Quora, that's fine. Use Yahoo Answers, but that can be a whole weird new thing. Um, because if you haven't been on Yahoo Answers, there's a lot of weird stuff on there. Uh, Answer the Public is another one of my favorites for just figuring out what people are trying to understand and the people also search for. Also great, because Uber suggest 
is a ghost of the beautiful beast that it once was. Rest in peace. So you get your questions, answer them on your site, and this is literally the easiest uh, content strategy that you could possibly have. If you just answer the questions that people have about your thing, about your industry, about your universe, you are sadly worlds above a bunch of people. Uh, people don't have time to parse your jargon. Don't make them. So yeah, it's, it's important to note, I don't hate cleverness. I just really like functionality and if you, have, if you have a really clever marketing pitch, if you have a really clever value prop, that's great. Maybe after you tell me what it is. I don't care about synergizing my downstream. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> like, just tell me. Is your thing a platform that like uses APIs to pull stuff in? Or is it just, is it just me guessing? So, I'm gonna kinda end on this. Because in, in an effort to, to wrap this whole thing up, I was looking for a good example um, of just actually saying what things are. And I fell back to one of my first bosses and my first mentor's website. So it's a link building company based out of Greensboro, North Carolina. And if you don't know, Black Hat Link Building is the most shameful thing to do in the search world. But it's where I started. Um, <laughs> And right there, front and center on her website, she has her link package. She has the pricing information on it. She talks to you about how her plans are built and what factors they rely on and all of that sort of information. And if a black hat link builder is willing to give you that information, don't you think that your taco restaurant can just tell them what time you open? Please. Shout out to Julie Joyce for being like the coolest human in the universe. Questions? Yeah. Thank you. Hi. On your list of content research sites, what do you think of also review sites since you're dealing with people who want an audience? Review sites do well in search. You're catching them in emotional time. It could also be a good way to scout reviews on competitor sites for ideas that you give context to a story. Right. So, for the most part, I, man, I am like nostril breathing right into that microphone, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> or there's a ghost. Um, so for the most part, I go back and forth on review sites. Uh, a lot of reviews are, or maybe, from, from people running, uh, reputation management schemes or, or things along those lines. So they might not necessarily be reliable. I mean, of course, you would like to build content to respond to those questions or to respond to those issues. Uh, you can absolutely do it. Like, whatever makes sense to you, whatever allows you to do that thing, whatever puts you in the position where you're answering questions and helping people do their product research and find the right things, I'm all for that. If you want to go to and scrape through 75 pages of Amazon reviews, sounds to me, personally, that sounds tedious. And it sounds exhausting. But it might be the thing that you like to do. I'll do backlink research over that any day, man. Sorry, JR, I know your questions aren't real. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of conversations with people at Red Hat relating to the complexity of their website. Right. Um, so since you're right in the midst of it, what's the funniest or perhaps stupidest anyone in Red Hat asked you to do something that was just out there? I'm going to plead the fifth on that one because this is going out on the internet and I don't <laughs> want anybody I work with to staff me and because they make the internet plumbing, they might just be everywhere. I don't know. I'll answer that privately. So I tweeted to SEM Rush and they said that hip denim leg application is actually Pretty popular term. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a, that's a lie. Okay, okay. Nobody so, listen to JR. So, like, how do you balance? Um, so, 
big brands can drive yeah. volume. Right. And they can drive what people search for. Right. Right. So how do you draw the line when you're looking at presentations <coughs> between what people without any awareness of your brand search for right. and what people who have received awareness for your brand and your product like naming and conventions yeah. and branding. How do you balance that? So for the two people watching online, JR just asked me uh, what, how to draw a balance of distinction between, between brand names and... It's not really like, so certain companies will talk about something in a specific way and oh, yeah. trademark yeah. on it. Like, like it might be... Like with digital jeans, transformation or synergizing like, at the speed of business. Like, yeah, they can have a jeans page, right? Right. And then, but they could also be a trendy company <coughs> and name them like, like hip hookers or whatever, right? Hip or, hookers. or just something that's not a common name, but it's, com it's, it's popular right. because they paid money to make that term yeah. interesting and popular. So, so how do you balance between people that don't understand that and want to find that page and people who have been hit over the head with this kind of terminology that the right. company has engendered. So I, th I, I think you're looking at, or you're asking about two separate things. One is kind of brand building and one is kind of capitalizing on organic value. Um, building awareness of a phrase of a specific term or a specific concept is difficult. Um, especially since, from what I have seen, uh, whenever you start trying to get like a new term or a new concept off the ground, the first spike of search volume is usually people trying to figure out what the heck you're talking about. Like, what does this phrase mean? What is what is a hip hoggers? Well, let me let me get let me give a better example. Like, okay. You go and search console, and okay. like the number one phrase is jeans, right? Right. And then the the, the next phrase is tech. Right. Techno jeans or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And I techno got you. Techno jeans is something that's yeah. been running commercials like nonstop. Yeah. Right. They go to the same page. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, how do you kind of marry between people who are more generic and people who are more kind of brand focused, but it still leads to the same product? How do you talk about that? Yeah. Um, so I I like using uh, I don't know one of one of the first highly successful campaign, campaign, air quotes, type things that I did was working with, funnily enough, uh, a law firm, uh, essentially just building trademark and copyright FAQ type content. Um, so if you do things like what are hip huggers, what are techno jeans, and then, hey, they're basically just the same as real jeans here, like this company, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then kind of connecting that into whatever organic funnel you have built out for regular jeans. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, it's, I mean, you're just designing content specifically to have the phrase. Right, separate. right. Okay. Yeah, I, um, people building specific terms and specific phrases is a weird problem that we kind of have in the universe. Uh, you can, you can combat that by building specific content to fight it, to say, to like to, to recapture that content, to kind of subvert or judo that content away from them. You also bid on it. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't like that. Yeah. Huh. Are you hoping for a wizard answer? <laughs> Techno jeans. Techno jeans? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> 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 but I guess I guess JR, what I'm arguing for is not doing that. Okay. Like in general, let's not make up new words for things. I mean, we can we can create new branding and new opportunities or, around concepts, but deciding that instead of jeans, we want to sell jeans with a D at the beginning of the of it. So it's jeans. That's tedious. Why? And I know, and I know, I'm not talking to any of those people in this room because those people are branding people and not search people. Um, but 
it's it's still a thing that pops up in the universe. You know, if someone decides that they want to call them genes, we can't stop them. We can just build content that explains how to spell it and how to pronounce it and what it means and all that sort of stuff. Um, and our competitors will build content to capitalize on that growing interest. And maybe the guy who bought DeGenes.com 25 years ago will get a sweet paycheck for squatting that domain for a while. Who knows? Any, gene, any questions that aren't gene related? In the back. So, uh, I honest caveat, SE, or, uh, local isn't my focus. I, I, I haven't done as much local stuff as I have other stuff. Um, I think I would, as a KPI, I'd look at bounce rates or... Local referrals. No, 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 not, not necessarily local referrers, because he's asking, are you, sorry, are you asking what metric would you look at to show the success of the content updates? Exactly. Like, what yeah. Would, like, how would you identify the returns rather than just keep like, adding content on? So you could do like, um, I don't know, I almost think of it as an inverse of the soft bounce where it's just people clicking around between pages angrily. <laughs> um, like, like session links that are seven, eight long, session links that are like two to three times whatever uh, the, the maximum length or like the average length of your site is. Usually I think of, when I look at analytics, I think of overly long session lengths as a, a secondary problem. It means people aren't finding the thing that they're looking for or I have, like the site is making them jump through a series of hoops. So if they can't find the menu, they might be clicking around and saying, well, is it on the About Us page? I don't know, is it about the, on the About Us page? You can also, and here's a fun thing. Sorry, what's that? No, they took the search, the search, the search history on the analytics results. Yeah. See what people search on on site to see if they're looking for a certain page. Yeah. It, Brian said if you have on site uh, to check on site search results to see if people are looking for the menu. Also, yeah, if you have on site search results, I don't know why I left that off of here. I'm like looking at on site search results. Come on, guys. Um, yeah, so you can look at that. You can also, uh, as an offline metric, track angry calls. Uh, that's that's not a joke. That's a, that's a real thing. I've done that with people. I've tracked. Can't find someone. Sorry. You're you're making a very interesting gesture, and I didn't know if it was a mirror at someone else. I think I think we're out of time. You broke it. I did not do that. Can you give a giveaway? <laughs>
Justice in presenting uh, kind of the, the interesting approach that we've had towards content marketing. Um, so Jared's made a great point about making sure that you have content that people are looking for. Um, another thing to do that's important with content is to make content that people want to look at and want to share. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to do that. Um, specifically, we're going to look at an approach that we use to help create great content from Reddit. So. First off, coming up with new content ideas is hard. It's something where you're thinking, how do I be unique? How do I present my brand or my business in a way that is going to help us stand out? After we've described what it is, as Jairus has mentioned, we want to make sure that we are able to stand out. And sometimes coming up with those ideas can be very hard and difficult. And uh, one of the things is, is not just coming up with the ideas, but making sure the ideas is a success. Whatever your key performing indicators are, how do you make sure that what you're doing actually reaches the goals and results that you have? Uh, once you kind of come up with an idea and you're pretty confident that it's gonna be successful, the hardest part next is to get the buy-in from your clients, your bosses, and your team to make sure that they're comfortable with the approach that you're having. Sometimes you can come up with a fantastic idea, you take it to a client, you take it to a boss or your supervisor, and you say, hey, this is what we'd like to do to help expand our brand and build our marketing effort. And Sometimes they don't want to move forward with that same thing. So it's something that can be very difficult and very hard to do. But luckily, one of the great things about the internet is not only is it a great place to share content, but it's also a great place to find content and find ideas. And one of the best ways to do that is through online forums, because online forums are a place where you can kind of get both a qualitative and a quantitative view of what people think about content. And one of the best forums is Reddit. Reddit is the biggest, and in my opinion, and many at GoFish's uh, Digital's uh, opinion, that Reddit is the forum that is great for finding content and building content and sharing content. Uh, it's a great place for content ideas because it's where people want to go and show the great things that they've done or they've been a part of or things that they find are funny or interesting and that then other people can let you know if it's been successful and funny and interesting on their end as well. So a quick history about forums, right? How do we get to where we're at today with Reddit? Uh, first, we started out with IRC. So many of you that have been around a little long in the tooth will know what IRC is and kind of jumping on the dial-up modems to, to connect to other people uh, in internet relay chats. From there, you might have gone to message boards about different topics, forums that still sometimes may even exist on the web today. Uh, Slashdot became something which was kind of an aggregator to show lots of interesting content related to technology. And then after that, we got to Dig. Many of you probably remember Dig, its rise and fall. Uh, and one of the great benefits of Reddit was when Dig kind of struggled in providing an environment and an atmosphere for users to really let them share and uh, publish content that is great, Reddit kind of stepped in and said, this is an environment where you can do just that. So Reddit is kind of king currently in terms of the forum content. Uh, it's number eight most visited website on the, on the web. Uh, and according to Alexa, and it's something where a lot of people probably spend their free time during the day. Um, in fact, 270 million, 274 million unique visitors visited the site in January. 
Uh, how many of you have used Reddit before? How many have used it within the last 24 hours? How many of you use, are you are using it right now? <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah, so some of that people spend their free time on Reddit. Um, Reddit has some key features that can help you with content. So one of the most important features about Reddit are subreddits. And for users that don't know, subreddits are kind of forums about particular topics. So for example, if you are a fan of a particular sports team, there's going to be a subreddit about that. If you have a particular fashion trends, maybe jeans or de jeans, there might even be a subreddit about that. Um, some examples are, uh, you know, every subreddit, every subreddit has the r slash movies kind of in front of it, the slash r slash in front of it. One would be on movies. It's about, even about the most recent movies that have come out, what people are thinking about them, what they like or they don't like about those topics. And that might be a subreddit that people would go to. Uh, another one is our food. So it could be something where you go to find out what you want to eat later tonight, get some ideas about what would be interesting to make or, or what other people have done creative, kind of where you go if you're not quite hungry but need to be. Uh, and, our, and some of these subreddits are really big. So the, the, our, the food subreddit has over 12 million readers, right? So that's the number of people that are looking on a regular basis at the food on the internet, right? Where they're really spending their time. Um, there's really a subreddit for everything. Uh, one of our favorites at GoFish Digital is um, Old People Facebook. And it is a subreddit where people kind of go and they post content that they might see from their grandma or their grandpa. Maybe an aunt and uncle for some of you older. Maybe it's your mom and dad that you're really looking at what they're posting on Facebook. Um, we have a few examples we kind of like to see. Uh, so this is one is a, a thread from Charles, and Charles posted on Kmart's Facebook page. He said, Carl's cat died yesterday. And the team at Kmart, they were probably pretty upset about this at first. He's like, what do we do? How do we handle this? How do we respond? But their social media team's game was on. They were like, we are so sorry to hear that. Charles, we love Kitty so much, they truly become a part of the family. And Vincent, who was probably a friend of Charles, said, Earl's guinea pig died last year. <laughs> So another one is Gene with Sparrow. He kind of was saying, if you notice, I never say much. I keep my feelings to myself. Sparrow's social media team responded with, tell us more, Gene. And Gene said, I said enough. <laughs> you know, and, and this is a story from Joel. Joel was kind of messaging to Old Country Buffet. And he probably heard on the news or the web about how there are these new chat bots where you can do things like order food. And he probably went to the Old Country Buffet's Facebook page and he said, order corn. And then he got a little frustrated a, you know, a few minutes later, and he says, order corn. Hello? Hello? Can I speak to a real person? Excuse me? And he gets a little bit desperate and says, please order corn. <laughs> so another great subreddit is shower thoughts, right? So a shower thought is something that's this great epiphany you have while you're getting ready in the morning, right? That's when the best ideas come to you. And people go on Reddit, and they post in sh uh, shower thoughts of the great ideas that they've had. Some of them we think are you know, very applicable to our team, particularly our graphic designers. You know, As a graphic designer, my entire career exists because I was able to pirate Photoshop 10 years ago. If you're a graphic designer, that's probably true. Uh, another one is, if I see Google in a show or a movie, I think nothing of it, but if I see Bing, I know it's product placement. <laughs> yeah, after Bing. Uh, another one is, there should be a millennia edition of Monopoly where you just walk around the board paying rent, never able to buy anything. <laughs> so, um, one of the great things that, uh, about Reddit, and we talked a little bit about this before, is, is it's a great place for both qualitative and quantitative information. Reddit is great is that once content is posted, people discuss it, right? They share their ideas, they share what they like about that content, what they don't like, and they have this long conversation similar to what you might get if you were looking at a focus group about a particular piece of content, of what was good about it, what was bad about it, and kind of what you can do. And this is a great resource for content marketers in terms of getting a pulse on what people like and what they don't like uh, with content. So the other part of it is the quantitative. So Reddit has built in upvoting and downvoting. So it makes it so that you can easily say, I like this piece or I don't like this piece. And content that's upvoted the most, that most that people like the most, kind of rises to the top. And as, the, as that, it gives you this resource and information of people like this content, and then the discussion lets you know what is it that they like and what they don't like about particular things in that piece of content. 
from that ranking is kind of a combination of those things. The total number of people that upvote something versus the number of downvotes, and then in a given set period of time, right? So as time expires, then new content comes forward and we move forward with that. So the front page is just exactly that. It's this ranking system where it takes all of these different uh, subreddits and the best content from those and it aggregates them together and it displays it um, on the front page. So on the front page of Reddit, you can see what's the most interesting part of the web, essentially, at any given day. Um, Reddit's known to be the front page of the internet, right? Um, and it's just that. Lots of interesting content that's coming forward from lots of different content sources. So like anything that's good and fun, there's probably rules around it to make sure that that content and that uh, site stays of a certain level of quality. And like that, Reddit has rules. Uh, the most important rules are no spam, right? Nobody on the web likes spam. If you're doing email marketing, nobody wants your spam. Uh, just like that on, on Reddit, nobody wants to see your spam. Um, and so kind of not to do that. Uh, another thing is no vote manipulation. So Reddit doesn't like it if you're getting lots of people to upvote content or lots of people to downvote content. Uh, it's kind of one of the things that they frown on. And if you're kind of involved in that, it's usually not going to be good for your content marketing efforts. Um, in addition to that, each subreddit can create their own rules for their community. Uh, an example of this is one of the subreddits that we have found and spent a lot of time on is data is beautiful. And as an example of kind of a Reddit sub, a subreddit rule is, you know, number eight is it says posts regarding American politics or contentious topics in American media are only permissible on Thursdays. So if you really wanted to find out something about politics, probably don't visit that page on Thursdays. Uh, on, only visit that page on Thursdays because otherwise they're not going to let that content be displayed. Uh, and the great thing about it is you can use Reddit to find content ideas. And now we're going to talk a little bit about how to not necessarily steal, but borrow some of the best content ideas from Reddit. Um, I really like this uh, graphic. You know, someone comes toward with the idea and says, I made this, you made this, and then the person says, no, I made this, right? So this is kind of something that we do a lot with content marketing is we take a good idea and we make it better, right? How do we build on top of that? Uh, some other ways to make sure that you understand Reddit is to be an active user. If you're not already active on the, the, uh, the website, by being an active user, you can really move forward with understanding the type of people that you're gonna be sharing the messages with and how they might receive the content that you're creating. Uh, another one that we're gonna talk about is the search function. So the search function is something that can be very helpful and powerful in let, letting you know what content is out there and what is performed well at any given time. Um, so we like search, right? We all spend a lot of time in SEO and, and looking at Google. Reddit's search function is not that powerful. It's not ever uh, knowing, and it's not gonna show knowledge boxes or answers, but it does give you a lot of interesting ways to approach things. You can look at based on which authors are publishing particular content, the site example, what's the best content on a particular site. If you've got a competitor or your own website, you can see what people have shared on Reddit and how well it's done. Um, it's a good way to do some competitor analysis and see what content is great there. Um, and as well, it has, uh, Reddit has features of making things easier, so once you get your results, you can sort on any particular, uh, in a, a number of different ways. So one of these is by relevance, on top, the content that gets the upvoted up the most, the content that's the newest, or the ones that get the most comments. Uh, you can also look at things and sort them based on time. Uh, we often like to look at things in the past month, just because that gives you a broad window, but something that's not too old so that you're not getting content that was popular a long time ago, like the Harlem Shake, for example, that maybe is, you know, expired a little bit. So there are limit results to, uh, limit results to a particular subreddit is another way that you can kind of phone, uh, hone in on your uh, particular search information. Just an example is, is that if you were looking for some sort of chicken dish, you would want to focus on a subreddit related to food so you didn't find out information about chicken Halloween costumes or other things that might not be relevant. Uh, filtering subreddits. So there's lots of different ways that you can filter a subreddit. You can filter based on the top content. Content that's controversial is sometimes interesting where it's getting lots of upvotes and lots of downvotes. New content, content that's up quickly getting upvotes, etc. And the most valuable filter combo that we have um, is taking a look at the past month and then the top content in a particular subreddit. And that gives you a good sense of seeing what content is popular or doing well. So we're gonna show you some examples now of content that we've done based on kind of research that we've done from Reddit and how it's been successful. So the first one is uh, case study one, popular subreddits. We had a software provider that was uh, creating 
a tool that allowed you to share content, uh, share information anonymously to come to the best ideas. Um, and they had a need of getting lots of backlinks and social shares so that they could improve their search rankings and so that more people would be aware of their uh, service offering. Um, and so what we found is that on Data is Beautiful, that there was lots of information that was being presented. It was a very large subreddit with over 12 million readers, so there was a big audience that we could present to. We also noticed patterns in terms of the way that people were titling their content and they were sharing it in terms of it performing well, and type of the graphs that they were showing, and so on. So what we did is we did something very similar. We took research that we had done, combined it with research that was available. We made sure that we structured it in a way that would match what was performing well on, on Reddit. Uh, we shared it on top of there. It got lots and lots of upvotes. Um, in addition to that, it got over 600 links and 7,000 social shares after it was performed well on Reddit. So the case study two, top content. So we had a client that is a limo and shuttle company and they basically did just that, provided limo, zine, or transfers, transportation services uh, to customers in the Washington DC area. Uh, what they needed was backlinks. They needed to be able to rank above their competitors and to do that they needed more backlinks to their website. Um, so we found that on Reddit, people really liked presidential limos. So basically we did a search in Reddit search results. We see that the content that was related to limos was getting upvotes, presidential limos on that particular topic. And we saw the content and the com uh, comments that were being uh, shared on that and we said, how can we take this information that people like presidential limos, what can we do to take it, enhance it, and make it more interesting, and then represent it back to Reddit to help our client generate links. And so what we created was a morphing uh, GIF of presidential limos over the years. And this is just that. So we took all of the images and we morphed them together in a GIF of showing this is how the presidential limos have changed over the years. Uh, we then kind of took that to Reddit, shared it out on Reddit and on other platforms, reached out to publications, and it did really well. Um, we were able to get a number of domain authority 90 plus links and hundreds and thousands of social shares that were very interesting. So case study three is trending items. One of the uh, clients that we have is a jeweler client and they had particular uh, needs of backlinks and brand exposure. They were particularly interested in getting their brand in front of more people at an affordable rate. So something that we found was that on Reddit there was a something called the hydraulic press channel. How many of you are familiar with the hydraulic press channel? So some of you. So it was this channel on YouTube and we found that it was continually hitting the front page of Reddit. It kept coming up. This one individual. And the hydraulic press channel um, is essentially a YouTube channel um, that had over a million subscribers. And basically it's a guy in, in uh, Europe who was crushing things with his hydraulic press, right? So he crushed watermelons, he crushed uh, phones, all sorts of different things. People love to see what would happen when you crush things with a hydraulic press. Um, so we got the idea is, is, well, maybe if we send him a diamond that he would crush it. And our, uh, our team found his email address and reached out to him and said, hey, if we send you a diamond, will you take that diamond and will you talk about our client? Will you say this, this diamond came from this particular jeweler and they uh, and link to them in the description of the YouTube video? And if any reporters call and ask you, you know, where did you get the diamond, make sure to mention our jeweler, uh, our jeweler client. And he said, that would be fantastic. I would love to crush a diamond. Um, so he came and he created a diamond crushing video. So if you guys are wondering what happens when you crush a diamond. So you probably couldn't hear the audio, but the, uh, the, the guy that creates the video um, is from Finland and he says, you know, they say a diamond is forever, but how long? and then he crushes this diamond. And as you guys saw it, it crushed. If you can see in the back, it just obliterates quickly. Um, and it did pretty well. Uh, it had 10 million views. It was the number one video on YouTube for over 24 hours. It was the number one, um, uh, reached number one on Reddit uh, at the same time. It got so many coverage and mentions that we couldn't even keep track of them, right? The Weather Channel talked about the diamond that was crushed, right? Nothing to do with it, but they were talking about it on their website and their videos, and it got 20 particularly high quality links directly back to our client's website. 
Uh, it's something that for our agency, we now talk about content, we say, is this diamond crushing content, right? Is it doing so well that we can't keep track of how well it's doing, it's doing in terms of its brand exposure? And it's something that our client was very happy with because they continually, even to this day, get ex brand exposure from this video. Reddit is powerful, right? It's something that you can quickly get in front of lots and lots of people. We've had content that we published on there bring down clients' websites because they weren't structured to handle the amount of traffic that comes to it quickly. Um, so that's one thing to be aware of. But like anything that's strong and powerful, it does have its own limitations. Um, some of that is Reddit's data is skewed. What that means is, is the audience that's active on Reddit is gonna be not your you know, normal demographics. So Pew Research Center did some particular research on this to find out, well, who is actively spending time on Reddit? And some of the information they said is it's mostly male uh, and a significant female portion as well, but one of the things to keep in mind there is that even if your target market might be towards people that aren't the majority on Reddit, there's going to be subreddits that is mostly made up of your target market, right? So that's something where you can find good content for your market because of that. Uh, on top of that, 64% um, were 19 to 29 years old, so they're younger, mostly male. Um, they have 42% have a college degree. Not that many have less than high school education. Um, they're a majority white, non-Hispanic, and most of them are pretty liberal and moderate. moderate. So if you have a particular uh, politically leaning content piece, just keep that in mind. It may not do well if it's uh, particularly conservative unless you're posting in particular subreddits that really wanna talk about just conservative content. So just to quickly recap, one of the things to do to be successful with Reddit content is to become an active user, master the search function so that you can find content that's doing well and then you can rip on it and make it better so that you can really drive your content to the top, diamond crushing content, and remember Reddit set its limits so that you can reach top content for yourself. Any questions? Here first and then Bob. Thanks. I'm really curious about the, the crushing the diamond not just because I work for a, a diamond company, but also I'm I'm interested in how does how do you work when you're working with influencers with FT dis, FTC disclosure? Because if this was a YouTube video and whether or not that was listed as, okay, this is sponsored by such and such. Do you have to do that again in a Reddit post, just like on Twitter, it might be hashtag sponsor, hashtag ad? So we didn't actually post on Reddit for that particular video. We created the video, he shared it on YouTube, and other people posted on Reddit. So it wasn't us actively doing that. During the video at the beginning of it, he talks about this is from this particular jeweler, it's of this rating, and he discloses that it was sent to him everything that happened with that agreement. So, um, you know, being very upfront with kind of how you're using content and what's going on there is, is usually the safest way to go about it. I have a few slides back when you were talking about uh, data is beautiful and the content that you created, you put up there and it got about 600 links. You're talking about 600 other websites linking to it from a single Reddit post? Yeah, so that one drove about 600 links from that one. So that's not gonna happen on every Reddit post. Sometimes no, they no. post that do really well and they don't generate a ton of links. Other times we've had them where people then called up and said, hey, will you be on our radio show, radio show in LA tomorrow? So um, a lot of journalists look to Reddit for new content ideas that they then republish. Okay. You think most of that success was because he already had a lot of a big following? For that particular one, it definitely kind of helped things go <laughs> forward faster, right? You know, picking a, a, an influencer that has a decent um, audience can help things be successful on their own. Yeah. How do you, um, so obviously if things on the front page or even the top of certain reddits, I mean they're seen by a pretty large amount of people including marketers. So I mean how do you guys um, look at investing time and energy and content when there could possibly be someone working on something very similar who may be featured to the punch with things? Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think so, um, and that's kind of where we look at the skyscraper, right? So if somebody comes to market with an idea that we're working on before us, we're gonna try and say, okay, how can we take that and iterate and improve it? Or we'll say, how can we pivot a little bit and have a different content piece? So, um, you know, the internet loves taking content and then reusing it and improving it. It's something you'll often see on Reddit for those of you reactive, like somebody will say, here's a picture of me in front of something, and then all of a sudden, the same day, someone else will post a picture in front of that same object and share it and it will really do well, right? Reddit likes repurpose content over and over again um, if it's like within the community and if it's something that's kind of fun for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about how Reddit doesn't like manipulating posts. Can you talk about the ways you can figure that out? How, you're doing that? Uh, how Reddit can 
figure out if you're manipulating votes. Um, so every subreddit has moderators, which have basically a view into additional information um, about the way that you're interacting with a particular site or a particular thread on there. Um, and one of the things they probably do is kind of see trends across if the same users are upvoting the same content, right? So if you have same user profiles continually voting for the same content, um, and they also potentially, I'm not, we're not quite sure if the moderators do, Reddit itself has IP information so they could see like if everyone inside you know, the nest, if we all went and upvoted something at the same time, they would probably see that type of information. Yeah. Uh, one more, sorry. Uh, so within certain hit, uh, or certain communities on Reddit, there are people with like fairly deep uh, kind of uh, uh, product or, or area knowledge so I guess how do you balance, or is there any tools that you have to kind of say we're going to create this piece, but you know if we share it here, then somebody on there might have more information that our the piece that we created might not have kind of the um, topic knowledge that needs to be shared by that particular community. So do you have any kind of tools or topics? Yeah. So if you're if you want to be successful on a particular subreddit, that's why we kind of say be an active user, so that you know what that audience is looking for. And if it's something where you know, hey, this isn't gonna be rich enough, you know, in terms of contextual information, then it's probably not a good piece to post there. And there might be another subreddit that has a better audience that you know, you're more in line with. Um, the other side of it is, is just being ready to discuss it uh, on the discussions, right? So if somebody has a lot more knowledge, they're gonna quickly come and tell you what they don't like about it. Anything related to design, you get a bunch of designers telling you all the things that's bad with the design you posted. Um, and so sometimes it's opinion, Sometimes it's mm. factual. Yeah. Got one question coming in from Twitter. Uh, this person has a children's coloring and joke book called Haha ha Coloring and Joke Book. Um, they are wondering if uh, on Reddit, if you have any specific subreddits that you would recommend that they go digging into, and if anything pops into your mind in the way of a uh, diamond idea that they could do to promote this. Uh, um, I know that there's a sub, you know, our comics um, does well, I'm not sure. Our, our parenting might be a good one. Um, so there's, if you go in and you search um, on Reddit, there's also, it'll return subreddits on those particular topics. So, um, you know, but that's a good, good sense to kind of get an idea of our parenting and our content. How many uh, of these types of experiments have you had yourself? Um, you mean like backfire or just not succeed? Uh, both. Uh, We'd yeah. like to hear them all. So, uh, <laughs> um, in terms of backfiring, I would say very rarely does it something that comes back and, and hurt us um, in terms of our marketing efforts. Uh, um, every now and then, something won't be as successful as we hope for. Um, so that's just something that you know, as you're communicating with your client, you know, you're tempering results and saying these are all the things we're doing outside of just our Reddit approach um, that's going to be successful. So. You know, I wouldn't ever say just focus, you know, don't put all of your eggs in one basket with Reddit because you need to make sure that there's other platforms that you can also share and that be successful. Michael, do you have a question? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, it's 18 to 29 age range. Um, and I was just curious, like, um, in your time with Reddit, has that age range sort of, uh, you know, shifted or is it in terms of your results you just delete the app? I'm guessing it's probably definitely shifting. Um, I think that as it's it's a site that younger people really like to go to. So as you know, people turn you know 19, or they spend a, you know 17, 18, 19, they're spending more time on the internet without parental supervision of where they're going. You know, Reddit is a place where they can go and get new ideas from people outside of their home. And for that age group, it's very powerful. And so I think those people also have more free time, and that might be why the demographic continues to skew low. Um, I, you definitely see people that are into their 40s, 50s, even 60s, and so on that are on Reddit, um, but they're just less than the lower age group. It's just this, this age range where that kind of cuts off, and they just think, like, oh, you're trying to. Yes. Right. Any other questions?
think um, I forgot to look at my notes and make one important announcement at the beginning, which is the bathroom is in the back corner over there. So if you're looking, we're like an hour in. Uh, it is right in that corner. Um, we have one last giveaway. Uh, speaking of tools that help you find good content, BuzzSumo is one of those. Uh, how many people use BuzzSumo? In okay. a couple. Okay. So if you win, you got to give it to somebody else. But if you don't have it, um, BuzzSumo is awesome. It's uh, similar to what Dave was showing. If you type in a website, an idea, uh, it'll return the most shared content. Not the best performing content on Reddit, but the most shared content across the web. Uh, so, let's see. We've got that. Yeah. Does Leslie do the whole thing on the number? Hey, I have one for us. I'm on your team. Right? Let's do mine. I five users. Five, seven, two. Five, seven, two. Oh, well, that's by the sea, for those of you who don't know, it's definitely a site you want to bookmark right now. 
and read, um, has over 1,200 posts covering over 1,000 patents uh, in the search field. Um, and he continues to write thoughtful pieces for that uh, every week. Um, if there was a Lifetime Achievement Award for search, I think <laughs> there would be no better recipient for it than, uh, than our next guest for the Fireside Chat, Bill Slosky. <laughs> because we really wanted this to be sort of interactive and get people um, who are going to be here tonight, also people who wouldn't be here tonight, to kind of um, jump in and, and uh, ask stuff that they've always wanted to ask Bill. Um, so, so let's jump in with stuff I don't understand. Uh, so the first question that was submitted was, uh, what is a context vector? Let's get deep. Okay, so Google came out with a patent about three, four months ago. Uh, that involves indexing words that have different meanings that are spelled the same and sound the same, like a horse. A horse to a gymnast is an animal. A horse to a carpenter is a tool. A horse to a uh, a horse to an equestrian is an animal. Let's go back on that. See to a. Uh, uh, Gymnast, it's a fault. It's an exercise. <laughs> okay, so how do you tell the difference? You look at the other words that show up in the same page. You uh, see if those are words that might come from a place like a, a knowledge base. So the equestrian horse uh, has words like saddle and stirrups on that page. Uh, that means you can include, you're no longer matching keywords to documents. You're matching meanings to documents. And how would that, how does that impact personalized search? So I, I can imagine if, if I've never searched Google before, I probably am <laughs> gonna get the animal because that's maybe the most common thing online, but, but if my search history is brought into it, like how, how do things change, change for me? Okay, so, Google uh, uses something that they call a bias document set. That means that they look at your search history and they bias your search results based upon things you've selected before. And our people who are similar, similar to you have selected before. Uh, if you do a search for Lincoln, you might get a result that involves the former president you might get a result that involves the city of Nebraska. You might get the car. So if you choose one, and the one you choose might influence future results you see. That's how personalization comes in. Got it. Okay, and uh, we got a whole series of questions on um, this other topic, which maybe, at least for me, was maybe a, a word that you know, Pete, and now it's just super annoying when people throw it out as a joke, which is fake news. Uh, so how does, um, we've heard a lot about how that, you know, influenced some recent events. Um, what, Facebook's talked a lot about that. What is Google doing to address fake news? Okay, so when we talk about crawling the web, we're familiar with Googlebot grabbing links and seeing what they link to. But there's a slightly different way to crawl the web to grab information about facts and attributes involving those facts. Uh, whether one, one like uh, uh, I mentioned a horse, uh, usually you see something about stirrups or saddles. So a horse has an attribute of her stirrups or saddles. Uh, they're related somehow. Uh, Crawler might crawl and grab facts from a page. Uh, there's something Google came out with a paper. I remember seeing Rand Fishkin write in Google Plus. Is this a replacement for PageRank? It was called Knowledge Based Trust. And what Google did was they took a bunch of facts they knew to be true and they crawled the web and looked for websites where those facts appeared 
and marked whether or not those websites got those facts correct or not. So websites that tended to have few fake uh, facts tended to be better sources of information, more accurate. So those were the ones where they would trust those sites more to publish uh, better featured snippets. So in, in theory, there is this set of sites that Google knows that we don't know that are more likely to get snippets because they got the facts right? That's right. Okay. So sites that, that publish fake news could potentially be blocked or at least have a disadvantage of getting an answer box. Sure. So, but so that's I not a change, right? It's not a change. The fact that we call it fake news now doesn't change from the old days when it just wasn't as powerful a site because nobody's linking to it. They weren't bringing any president into this. This is something that came up with, two, with that in 2014 before he was elected. Right. But so they Google weren't was always seeing CNA a as a source of fake news because they weren't concerned that they uh, got bed mouthed by CNN. Right. But here's, here's what I'm trying to say. If you are searching for uh, who won the baseball game today, yeah. Google is always going to give you an answer from somebody they thought was authoritative. If you go looking for fake news, or whatever's been labeled as fake news, they can't return the New York Times or whatever because they're, it's only available on certain sites. So if you go looking for um, is, the, is the DNC paying protesters? They will give you an answer. They're not marking it as fake news, but they're pulling from a source which they don't recognize as real news either, right? Okay, so you had something like PageRank that was based upon popularity, people who linked to things. You had uh, sources of information like World Weekly News who weren't well known for accurate information, but were very popular. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you were basing things on stuff like PageRank, you might see results from World Weekly News, uh, as opposed to New York Times, which may be more accurate. Uh, so yeah, there's a change there. Well, I, I think this has come to a head recently with some of the answer boxes that have showed up that have been less than <laughs> quality, <laughs> let's say. Um, so, so Google's in search of this sort of single version of the truth. Um, is that fair to say? That is what people are complaining about, yeah. <laughs> but is there any really any site that is completely authoritative? I mean, like, that makes no sense to me because there's- Some just... sites tend to be more authoritative than others. Like the BBC tends to be accurate most of the time, except they do some stuff like they show spaghetti growing on trees. Yeah, but I mean, there's a certain subjectivity to that. Yeah. The truth, I guess, to a certain extent, I mean, it depends a lot on your worldview. So, I mean, there's a bias to whether you like BBC versus Fox versus versus NBC. Yeah, I had not read the called Trust Rank, where they found sites that people thought were trustworthy, and they built a, a seed set of sites that were connected to each other, and said that sites that were linked to from those trusted sites tend to be more trusted sites yeah. and better sources of information. Uh, not necessarily true. Yahoo isn't really that strong a search engine these days. <laughs> it's more trusted as a new site. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Just, uh, yeah. but, but you know, it's it's something we're looking at the algorithms, getting some sense of how well they work. And, uh, knowledge based trust is a different way of looking at facts that are crawled on the web and getting a sense of how accurate they are. Because if you think they're more trustworthy, they may be. And how, so with an answer box, I think they're trying to present a single version of the truth. There's been some weaknesses there, but generally, what are they doing to kind of algorithmically? To co corroborate the facts on my, the information on it. tweet from John Mueller today that asked why uh, patents and uh, something, things that were a lot of Research speech. Uh, Google's uh, stream of voice. The one I used to like and use in the early days was Xenu Link Sleuth. 
I used to do crawl sites. It used to help me find spider loops, uh, architecture of the website. And once a uh, streaming product came out and I got to try it out, I switched over to that. It's really helpful, like I said, in getting a sense of uh, whether a site's all HTTP or HTTPS, uh, www, so on. Uh, just getting a sense, seeing what the different data parameters are on pages and seeing how pages are connected together. Uh, I, being able to identify duplicate pages uh, based on things like uh, different title cases, lowercase, so on. It's really helpful. Uh, export into that APIs like the Google Search Console API and the Google Analytics API, and then uh, send all that to Excel and sort and separate and make a content inventory is really helpful. Uh, it's how I start most SEO campaigns. And it, it if I may speak for you, it was, it was subtle there, but I get a chance, I'm lucky enough to work with Bill almost every day. Um, and Bill will use a tool, but he always ends up back in Excel. So I think most, <laughs> most of the SEOs that, that you work with are probably very similar to that. That Excel is their go-to after they get some crawl data. Um, and Bill's no, no different there. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that? Okay, so I'm known for, and I got up this morning, and I to the patent office website and I found one that was